Hey guys, so it is week 171 here on the homestead. Uh, 171 weeks ago, I gave up everything, moved to Bulgaria and started my own homestead. So let's see what we've been up to since then. Hey guys, so 171 weeks here on the homestead and uh, this week we've, uh, again it's been very very hot so I haven't been doing much throughout the day uh, but we've had the carrot harvest, um, so we harvested uh, about 10 kilos or 22 pounds of carrots uh, and I've been jarring those uh, and getting them ready for some winter storage so that I've got carrots later in the year. Put some in the freezer for Christmas dinner. Um, I've also been uh, just doing a little bit of work around the place, uh, a little bit of weeding here and there and some watering to keep the plants from dying. Uh, now it is actually going to be my birthday this week which also means it's my brother's birthday. Uh, so a very happy birthday to James. Uh, thank you for everything, absolutely loved the video. Um, so my brother uh, organised a, a video from uh, Norman Lovett. Uh, Holly from uh, Red Dwarf and I will put that on at the end so that other people can enjoy it as well. It was a lovely thing for him to do uh, and uh, it really meant a lot to me. So thank you very much James and a very happy birthday to you. I hope you like your presents. But anyway guys, let's see what else we've been up to here on the homestead this week. Well guys, time once again for what the hell is that. Uh, last week's winner was once again uh, my great aunt Julie. Uh, who correctly identified the tree as a lime tree. Not the sort of lime tree that produces limes apparently, but uh, a different type of lime tree. But we found out what that is. But what's this this week? As you can see, it's got a clustered white flower and um, <coughs> paired off leaves that are, um, you know, they're, they're symmetrically paired off. They actually uh, have a, a long attachment at the stem uh, and they're quite pointy. Uh, we have got another plant which has very similar flowers to this uh, but these ones are sort of more rounded and uh, convex rather than concave like the other ones but uh, if you know what this is and you want to be mentioned in the video next week drop below your answers what you think what the hell is this Well guys, as you can see, all the little chicks are actually getting quite big now. These were the first ones hatched. They're between uh, six and eight weeks old. Um, so yeah, they're doing very well. Uh, but it really does go to show you the difference between uh, home-grown chicks and uh, uh, store-bought. Uh, store-bought chickens tend to be about 21 days old when they go to slaughter. And uh, these guys are already twice as old as that, if not three times as old as that. Um, and as you can see, they're not even uh, up to the same size as full-grown chickens yet. Uh, they do grow very slowly. Especially that little black one that's just come in at the back there. That's little black. He's a mix between an uh, Australorp and a uh, Polish frizzle. Uh, so he's going to be a bantam-sized chicken. Uh, but uh, he should have a very nice poofy black crown when, uh, when he grows up. Or she. We'll see. Well guys, this week we had these little guys hatch. Uh, we've actually got seven or eight in here now. Uh, they're doing fine. Uh, last lot of hatching was three weeks ago. Uh, that guy's now outside. And of course before that was eight weeks. They're actually full grown chickens. But these guys will be in here for three weeks uh, until the next lot hatch. And then uh, these guys will be outside as well. But for now, they're just in here enjoying their food. Being lovely little chicks. Well, thank you.
Well guys, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. So once again, a very happy birthday to James. I hope you have a great day. Um, don't forget guys, my book uh, Sophie is now available on Amazon or via uh, paperback or Kindle. Uh, if you've got Amazon Prime or Kindle Unlimited, you can of course get yourself a free copy. And we have now had over 250 free copies downloaded uh, and probably about three of them read. Uh, but still, uh, go pick yourself up a copy. It is a fantastic book and everyone that's read it has enjoyed it. Uh, so, yeah, have a good week, and I will, of course, talk to you again soon. Happy birthday, James. And after this uh, is the birthday message that James organised with uh, Norman Lovett for me. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Hi, this is uh, Holly, Norman Lovett, the comedian Ho Ho Norman Lovett. No comedian Holly. <laughs> Sorry, I <laughs> messed up there. To Steve Butler, this is to Steve Butler from James Butler, and you're, you're twins, and that's fantastic. And you're both about to turn 39. Wow, that's so young, isn't it? I mean, I'm coming up to 75 in October. And and I, I moaned when I was 41, I remember. And somebody said to me, do you remember we, when we did this, when you were 41, he said you were moaning about being old all the time. And I, I just apologised to him. I said, that's terrible behaviour. 41's not old at all, 39's, you know, it's just all rubbish, isn't it? And life begins at 40, that's rubbish as well, isn't it? Because life begins as soon as you're born, as far as I'm concerned. When you, when you throw your, I don't know, first tantrum, you know, that's life. That's, that's what happens. Uh, anyway, that's fantastic. That's really good. I mean, I don't think I've done... You know, a pair of twins. I, don't, I haven't done twins, I don't think, in all these uh, uh, things I've been doing, these uh, cameos, you know. And uh, that's the first time for me, so that's great. Anyway, it says, uh, from James, is from James to Steve. You twins, you, you twins, you. It could do some... Oh, don't take the notes of me, I'm mumbling away like an old man. If you, you know, I'm talking about being old again, oh my God. Well, I am old, yeah, I am old now. It's all right now, it's not so bad. If you could do some Red Dwarf quotes and wish him happy birthday, that would be amazing. Thank you. Well, happy birthday, Steve Butler. And I've got to say happy birthday to you, James Butler, as well, because you're twins. I wonder who's, uh, yeah, one of you must be slightly older than the other, like seconds I don't know, yeah, it's true, isn't it, I suppose, if you timed it. But anyway, sorry to go into that. I shouldn't have said that, really. Anyway, so more about Steve Butler. Steve is my twin brother, and we both love Red Dwarf. He now lives in Bulgaria on his own farm. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't it? That's fantastic. That sounds wonderful. And uh, what will they love most about you? The best and greatest holly. Well, that's not for me to say, but uh, I have to say that you both have great taste. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry. Sorry about that. I just had to. Do... <laughs> um, it does get embarrassing sometimes um, with, with uh, the Holly thing, but, uh, you know, it's over now. I didn't, I never wanted to leave, really. I, I, you know, I, I, it just, it's, when you're looking back at it, you just think, you didn't want to leave, did you? But you, you, you were sort of forced to, in a way. There was, I won't go into it, but I mean, but in another way, I just think, well, you left and you, you know, you, you, and you came back, you know, you came back and returned to the role. So that's fantastic. And doing the role again, you know, the last thing I did before the uh, COVID arrived was uh, obviously the, the 90 minute special, uh, you know, just before COVID arrived, you know. So we got that, and that went down well. That got good reviews and went down very well. So I like, delighted to be a part of that. That was fantastic. Anyway, do some quotes from Red Dwarf. Everybody's dead, Dave. Everybody is dead, Dave. Oh, I wish I'd never let him out in the first place now. Sort of right, wasn't it? That wasn't, wasn't bad. <laughs> we are talking Jape of the Decade. We are talking April, May, June, July and August full. Yeah, that's right. I was Queeg all along. Suckers. I didn't, I didn't say suckers. Anymore. When I said suckers, I just went all wobbly. So I did it again. <laughs> I gave myself a shock there. Uh, that was my favourite episode. Obviously, it was a it was a Holly episode, and but uh, I was very pleased uh, when when I saw it back, and, and it still remains, you know, one of the 
uh, it's in the top whatever. <laughs> they sometimes do a top 20 or top top 50, but it's, uh, it remains there. And I think quite rightly so. It's a fantastically written episode. And, uh, yeah, it's very good. And, uh, yeah, it's been some classic stuff, hasn't it? It really has. Uh, let me think of what else I've got. Uh, I've got. I've written some stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, that, this is one I, I had to write this one down because I just would have forgotten about it. This is something one I thought that wasn't funny at the time. That's a load of Tottenham. That is a steaming pile of hotspur, and I didn't think, well, you know, it's all right. But now, thirty-five years later, I'm thinking, yeah, that was good. That was good. very good. <laughs> and the moral of the story is appreciate what you've got. Because basically, I'm fantastic. Obviously, that's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's an emergency going on. It's still going on. It's an emergency. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? I like that. The dog's milk. Uh, that was playing a trick on Lister there. Yeah, we're on the dog's milk now. Nothing wrong with dog's milk. Full of, full of, uh, full of, I can't remember. I didn't write this down either. Full of. Full of marigo for marabou jelly. Good for you, really good for you. Nothing wrong with dog's milk. And it lasts forever, you know, it lasts forever. Why? Because no bugger will drink it. <laughs> that was good, yeah. Right, okay, I've made a, I think, I hope I've entertained you and uh, enjoyed this uh, uh, birthday uh, video to you both. Fantastic, all the best to you. And have great uh, long lives, long and happy lives. And it's been lovely talking to you. All the best to you and happy birthday once again. 39. Happy birthday. Bye.